I guess there's something a little bit different today. Instead of main stage, uh, at the moment I'm on a show where I'm using QLab to queue up some samples, uh, some sound effects, some percussion, things like that. Um, and I've chosen QLab because it's just uh, a lot simpler than using Ableton or Mainstage to queue up these files. I've not got many of them. Uh, most of them are within the songs, within the music, um, and they need to be kind of in time with the music, gunshot sounds, uh, snare hits, for example. I am playing an acoustic upright in this show rather than having the digital setup, so as few bits of tech I can get away with, uh, the better, really, because it's quite nice to just have a, an analogue setup, in a sense. I've got this Akai pad here um, that is being used to queue up the sounds. I've patched a button here to uh, continue to the next sound or play the next sound, and a button here that will just panic and just cut them all off. But that's all it is, basically. That's then being fed to the front of the house, um, where it's mixed with their own sound effects. I'm just going to dive in just to show you how I've got things set up, fades and things like that, and just see what sort of things we can do with it. In a normal show, all of these sound effects would usually be cued from the back, from the front of the house, from the tech guys. Uh, but in this show, because they're so integral to the music in certain places, um, I've had to use them to actually cue them up myself live as I'm playing. So let's have a look at the software and see what it can do. <laughs> So here I am in QLab, um, this is the workspace that I've got for the show that we're currently doing. Um, at the moment and possibly for the show um, I have an opening gong, a set of uh, cues for funeral drums and then a few separate gunshots. Uh, the gunshots are in time with music, the uh, funeral drums are like a bed underneath a scene and the opening gong is just in place of an overture essentially for this show. It's just an opening to go into the first scene. Now when setting this up, um, all I did was create the uh, funeral drum sounds um, and create maybe a 30 second loop of that pattern. Um, and then within that, I can then loop this section, uh, this 30 second, 30 three second clip uh, as long as I need um, to fit with the scene. The opening gong is just a one single sample of a gong and the gun as uh, as with the gong is just a simple sample on its own. So all I did was to drag the audio in um, and I'm presented with this and it will by default be a play action. So when I press space You hear that gong, um, and that is as simple as it is. The space fires it off. Uh, it will then stop the audio file once it's completed and move on to the next patch, uh, the next cue. Sorry, um, which in this case is the funeral drums, and this is a little bit of what they sound like. So that's your funeral drums, it's a, uh, an endless looping march sort of thing, uh, which is underscoring a scene near the end of Act 1. Now, what I did there was just press escape, just to kind of just cancel whatever is playing at the moment. Now, this is where you get into some interesting sort of stuff. Um, this cue that I just selected will start the actual audio. This cue is set to fade down to minus 10 dB. Um, to underscore some dialogue that's happening. I will then fade up once some dialogue has finished and it fades back up to about minus 5 dB. We'll fade back down again to minus 15 for some more dialogue and then we finish with another cue which will fade it uh, to silence and stop once it's faded to that point. Uh, the actual audio file itself which is here I've put on a play count of 100 so it will loop 100 times uh, which is more than enough. Uh, it's just to make sure that I uh, have it keep going just in case anything happens with the scene. Um, the audio itself initially when I was creating it was uh, a 15-16 minute long audio file. 
Um, and in talking to the tech team for the show, uh, it seemed to be a lot easier to have a 30 second clip or, or even shorter. I've gone for 30 seconds here because it's sort of two goes around that pattern. Uh, and then set it to loop in QLab itself. Saves me having a big audio file, saves me having a long loop time. Um, and yeah, it, it's just going to run more efficiently regardless because the, the files aren't as heavy. So, little idea. Press space there, we've got the funeral drums. If I then press space again, I'm going to fade down. See now it's faded down to minus five. It will then fade at minus 10, sorry, it then fade up to minus five when I select this cue. So up it goes. Another fade down to minus 15. It's quite quiet now. And then the last space will actually just fade quite slowly and then once it's reached the point that it's supposed to volume wise it will stop completely uh, and we'll stop the audio and we'll move on to the next cue ready for the next number that it's needed in so it's really really easy really simple um, but yeah so let's dig down a bit more so here all I've got that's changed is my play counts 100 and I've got the audio um, basics they're all the same I've renamed it just to make things a bit easier um, it's armed, so it is. it will play if I set it to play. And I've got it on do not continue uh, because I want to be queuing all of these myself uh, individually. I don't want it to all automatically move on. You can add some audio effects. Um, I actually ad added them in the audio file itself, but it will just, um, it will just read your, your VSTs, your audio units, whatever it is you use, um, and you can add those on as well. Now when we get into the fades, all I need to do here is select a fade, so I choose a fade there, go to my basics and I'll set the target to be the number, so 1. It's now linked to fade this. And then all I do is change my audio levels, so let's assume that that's 0, and I would just change this to whatever I need it to fade down to um, at that point. If you then go to Curve Shape, I can then select the duration of the fade. So if I wanted a three, let's start the audio, select this new one. If I wanted a three second fade, it will do that any longer and it will just change the length of the fade. You can also change the curve. I haven't got into that for this particular show because I just need basic fade and, and that's really all that I need it to do. So there we have uh, the funeral drums and the fades, fade and stops. Then my gunshots here are just individual, just all the same audio file essentially, because I'm actually playing uh, the song and then within the song there are some actions for gunshots and I will just fire those off in time with the choreography, with the dance uh, and with the music. Now at the moment, as I'm uh, at home I'm using the space bar to queue up these uh, these cues but in the theatre um, as I'll show here I've got this um, pad that I mentioned earlier and it's just so much easier than me reaching to try and get to that space bar in time uh, I can just tap it right in front of me and they fire them right off and all I need to do to set that up is to go into the workspace settings uh, which are in the window menu um, and go to MIDI controls and I'll be given this. Now go is to fire off the queue and move to the next one. So all I need to do is just click this capture button here, tap whichever pad it is, whichever MIDI note or key or whatever I'm using to queue the sounds uh, and it will then read it as that data um, and will work, it will just work. Now byte two is the velocity if that says any number, um, then you are best to just change that number out and just write any as I've done there. Um, and it will just 
fire off no matter how hard or soft I press that that particular drum pad because what I don't want is for it to not fire because I've not hit you know a certain range of velocity and that's all there is so that's a very basic kind of start to QLab as as is my experience really um, I've just started working with it um, it does a whole host of things that I may never need uh, lighting and video and such um, it would be my choice uh, to queue up tracks um, and loop tracks and things like that so it can be used for that and that's still just a very basic a fade a panic and a, and a go it's all you need um, but it can do so much more it is free it's a free software uh, package uh, to a point it's free it's for the very basic um, features if you want two outputs just a stereo output and uh, you get into just the audio it's free I think when you get to more outputs you want in multi multi outputs and you want in lights and the video and all that sort of stuff um, then you pay per day or per week I think it's a license based thing um, <clears throat> but the website has all that information and these are all the features that um, all of the actions I suppose that you can have uh, at the moment as I say I'm just using play stop and fade but uh, there's a whole host of other things here that um, feel free to look into in this free software. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd do a little video on this because it's something I'm, I'm getting into and I'm learning myself uh, and it could come in handy to some of you in a similar position. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.